Hi, Jeff here, FarmerPricing.org. Thanks for coming by. Now, last time uh, we looked at hepatocellular carcinoma approval uh, and the impact on Nexavar revenues uh, relative to Pfizer's suitant. Um, now today, uh, rather than looking at the immediate term impacts of changes, uh, we're going to uh, be forecasting a little bit with epidemiology here. Uh, and looking a little bit further into the future. Um, starting off here, we have World Health Organization data, um, and it's looking at mortality rates, uh, deaths per 100,000 inhabitants in a given country, uh, and we'll, of course, be looking at uh, liver cancer today. Now, this data is well presented, but uh, serves our purpose a lot better uh, in this format. It's been visualized here by someone uh, on this map that I found, and just gives a much better uh, visual representation uh, of where liver cancer um, is really prevalent uh, in the world. Obviously, Mozambique, a hotspot, and Mongolia as well. Now, our focus today uh, is Asia um, and not just Mongolia as well. We're interested in China, uh, Korea, South Korea, Japan. Um, all these are markets present uh, interesting opportunities. Um, we can just see here that there is a legend, so uh, Mongolia, more than 110 uh, deaths per 100,000 inhabitants per year. Uh, but even in China, around between 30 and, and 45. Um, so of the 600,000 uh, HCC cases diagnosed each year, uh, two-thirds of them are in Asia. Um, so what opportunity does this present? Uh, we must ask ourselves, well, the Chinese market, for instance, uh, according to Decision Resources, is set to triple uh, from 53 million in 2009 um, by 2014. Now, at first this is pretty exciting, um, and an increase of $100 million uh, over five years would represent about a 67% relative growth rate. But, as we saw last time, global necks of our sales were already around a billion dollars annually in 2010, and growing at about $100 million per annum. So even an increase in China of $100 million um, in terms of liver cancer treatment is only a small percentage of absolute growth. So the important thing to take home here is that it will not be until the end of the next decade that the impacts of Asian access uh, to these therapeutics will really be felt. We're not trying to discount the growth here, um, but I was very enthusiastic uh, about the growth of the Chinese market. Uh, I took it to my associate, Larry Gorkin, and he said, hold on, Jeff, um, take these numbers with a grain of salt, uh, look at it in the bigger global context, and you'll see that while it's an exciting story, it's a small contributor contributor to overall global growth in the short term. So just wanted to bring that to your attention, um, that we do have a global focus. We are looking at uh, not only revenue, but epidemiolog epidemiological trends as well. Um, thanks very much. Have a great week.